Welcome to Common Ground. My name is Fernandito Osa, and I am a host today, filling in for our Sheriff Steve W. Tuscan. Today, my guest comes from Dorchester Bay Economic Development Corporation, Perry Newman. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to have you. So let's talk a little bit about Dorchester Bay. 37 years in the making, transforming, changing lives, uh, beautifying the neighborhood, just to give you a little intro, but let's talk about Dorchester Bay. Well, happy to have the opportunity to do so. Uh, we are a community development corporation, as you say, in our 37th year of existence, and we're based in Upham's Corner. Uh, and so the area that we really serve is in that North Dorchester area. Uh, we develop affordable housing in that area and really throughout other parts of Dorchester in partnership with our fellow CDCs. Uh, we're engaged in not only affordable housing, but economic development. We have a lending program. We have technical business assistance. And perhaps the soul of the organization, if you like, is community organizing and resident mm -hmm. initiatives. So within those three principal areas are the, uh, the tools and the levers we have to change neighborhoods and to improve people's lives in Dorchester. Excellent, excellent. So some of the projects that, that you have done, but recently there's one right now that's standing out. Right, we have one on the drawing board, if you like that uh, promises to be a very, very significant uh, housing and commercial opportunity for the Upham's Corner area. We call it transit-oriented development mm. because it's located or will be located when it's constructed right alongside the Upham's Corner MBTA site. Mm. So it's located on East Cottage and we call it the Indigo Block. Mm -hmm. uh, there'll be 80 units of affordable housing and nine units of home ownership and it will be connected by a walkway directly to the MBTA platform. So the idea is that people can live here, uh, they'll have access to the MBTA, of course, can go downtown for work, uh, and there'll also be 20,000 uh, square feet of light industrial commercial space on the site. So it's a place to live, to work, uh, and from which you can get to other parts of the community. So it's really a, sort of a holistic look at uh, improving the neighborhood. Yeah, it's a beautiful building, too. We're actually seeing a picture of it right now. but. Uh yeah, that, that's, a, that's an amazing, big, huge spot there. That's a really nice uh, location for that. And the ideal that the MBTA, you know, is right there, um, growing in, in itself with uh, other developments that have gone on in that area, uh, just enhancing the community on a larger scale. Um, uh, the part of the community uh, base, now let me go shift a little bit to the mm -hmm. community part. There are, there are, you're also very engaged with the community. Uh, take me, walk me through that in the engagement with the community. Who is, who sure. are, who is the community? Sure, sure. <laughs> well, you know, in one respect, uh, they are the residents of the properties that we own and have developed. Now, we have about 950 apartment units mm -hmm. in our portfolio. So, of course, all those uh, individuals who reside there, families, young people, older people, and so forth. Uh, we have a particular responsibility to them as our residents, so to speak. Uh, in a larger sense, of course, the community uh, beyond the properties that we own are the part of the community in which we work and live as well. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about engaging the community, we're talking about empowering individuals to be politically active, mm -hmm. uh, to be uh, active advocates for their own uh, interests when it comes to uh, you know, property development, gentrification, and so forth. Uh, and we help to, to, uh, to provide advocacy skills so that individuals can not merely live, but they can flourish uh, in the neighborhoods in which they work and live. So we try to be, uh, you know, sort of a holistic guide mm -hmm. uh, and to bring people along uh, into leadership capacity uh, and where we have the greatest influence. And I have to say, uh, I guess I'm one of those, you know, uh, uh, of those folks in, in the community that, you know, was able, fortunate to be part of that, uh, was kind of taught in guidance through how to become a leader in the community and then turn and, and turn make others into leaders and changing the community uh, where at one point we were considered like the broken window in the neighborhood and then because of the participation of the community engagement of all different backgrounds cultures race and religion came together and uh, you know we we were able to get city and state and uh, Boston Police Department fire department everyone engaged city you know um, wise 
that we were able to make the changes in that neighborhood with, with the leadership of Dorchester Bay um, to then guide us through. And today, our neighborhood has you know, really been a, a, a model. That is the way I see it. Because I remember we had just begun our first crime watch at that time, and we won in consecutive three years in a row the best, the best uh, crime watch neighborhood, and that was never heard of. I was told, and I was like, wow, really? And, I, and every year there was one given out to different neighborhoods, but we made it three years in a row. So that was a big, big thing for us, you know? Well, you did a lot of things right. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, uh, relationships are uh, really the coin of the realm in, in this business. I mean, uh, you need to develop a relationship, uh, you know, with uh, institutions and organizations and with the police and the residents and with Dorchester Bay and the residents and residents with each other and neighboring organizations. And nobody can do any of this work alone, and you have to trust each other. Yeah. So I'm very pleased that I've been able to, uh, to step into this position uh, and build upon the legacy of the great work that's been done with the Crime Watch and neighborhood empowerment, uh, youth force work that we do. Uh, it's really quite impressive, and uh, that's something that we're very, very keen on continuing. Good. So now I'll move a little bit to a reentry, mm -hmm. because that's something that's really up my alley. In reentry, you have a reentry program at Dorchester Bay too. We do, we do. Since uh, 2008, uh, Dorchester Bay has been uh, working uh, on a reentry program, and we're really the first, I think, if not the only CDC that has such a reentry program. It really is a very profound experience to meet with people who have really turned their lives around, mm -hmm. and I'm very proud to say through the intervention and support of our reentry program. You know, we have a very dedicated team of individuals who meet with people uh, upon their release, uh, actually before their release from the detention center, uh, counsel them on how to put together a resume, help them find work, help them with cover letters, help them with interview skills, help them with life skills. Uh, and you know, once they get in a position, if they're fortunate enough to find a position with our assistance, uh, we don't just sort of say, well, good luck to you. You know, it's a nurturing relationship. And it really, if this may sound a little bit, uh, you know, perhaps, uh, you know, too lofty or too romantic, but there's a lot of love that goes into mm -hmm. it. Oh, yeah. uh, and uh, in many cases, these individuals have been, you know, perhaps abandoned by their families because they've uh, done, you know, done some bad things. Uh, but, you know, the support that they get from the Dorchester Bay reentry team is profound and it's life changing. Uh, we have so many success stories and of all the things that we do that make a difference, uh, I, am, uh, I am so uh, emotionally affected mm. when we get together for our kind of reunion um, lunches uh, and I see what people have done to turn their lives around. So it's very, very important to us as an organization and uh, very, very satisfying for an individual. Yeah, because you also go a little further, uh, more than that, as a partnership with, with the Suffolk County. Um, you're, you also have a mentor that also comes to the facility and actually presents uh, to those that will be coming back into the communities and sort of, be, that's where it begins, right that's there and then, to offer your services, to engage them and to say, you know, we're here to help and, you know, take a, you know, come out, come see us, engage, and, and, the, and the work begins. That's right, it, you know, it begins before release yeah. uh, and it surely does not end upon release. I mean, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and our, uh, our reentry counselors, uh, um, you know, they will hound you uh, yeah. in the best possible way. You yeah. know, they'll call you, hey, did you go to work today? Did you check back in with us? We didn't hear from you last week. Where are you? How are things going? Uh, and, you know, we have a long-term relationship with many individuals who've participated in the program. And so it's, it's an extended family. And it means a lot to us. Yeah. I also wanted to say that, you know, uh, and, and we'll go back into this a little more, but, you know, the work that you folks have done, you know, what I've seen, you, and you said, you know, you're saying that you work with your, your communities and, 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 and residents, but it's the way you also um, take really um, care of the neighborhood you, in, in the sense of where you find, you find buildings or lots or empty buildings that you then develop to transform and, and actually make them worth so many lives because abandoning properties as we know in empty lots, you know, just raises sometimes uh, things that just are not happy. It's not nothing happy to look at. And it's just kind of like uh, there's a vague, something's missing. Right. And when mm -hmm. you do these transformation and, and you start to build up that neighborhood, you can actually see, and there's many, many, I mean, you're so in so many areas that, you know, we wouldn't have the time to talk about every property that you have, but you also have other buildings that really have made significant uh, differences in the community. Right. And I can, for once, remember one of them was, was, was when you guys did the uh, Spire building in Seven Hill. Mm -hmm. And so it was a significant building at the time, 
and what it did and how it created jobs, you know? Right, but, right. but you can tell me more if any that I'm missing that it's just the way you guys do it. You do it so unique and so well, I and they're beautiful that. buildings. Well, you know, I appreciate that. You know, if you, if you think about, you know, if, if you just want to build a box and uh, mm. make it a nice box and people will inhabit in that box, I mean, you're doing something and that's good. You know, in many cases compared to what was there before, it's an improvement. But if you think about things in a more holistic sense, uh, what, what's the impact of not just uh, building a place in which people can reside, but where, where people can work nearby? I mean, this is the whole thinking behind the Indigo Block. Another great example of that is, uh, is the Bornstein Pearl uh, Food Production Center, uh, which is part of a neighborhood. You know, we won a Choice Neighborhood Grant and Award uh, over on Quincy Street, and you know, we have um, within uh, the Bornstein Pearl Production Facility, which was fallow and not doing anything, we've turned it into a beautiful, uh, uh, space for food production with the help of Commonwealth Kitchen, which is occupying a significant portion of that space, and there are other larger tenants and smaller tenants in there as well. So we have you know 125 individuals, primarily from the community, working there in food production, and we have nice uh, residential properties alongside. So that whole the whole corridor has been changed, and so it's it's that vision. Uh, to look beyond, okay, this is a space where people will live, but where, where will people live and, uh, and where will people work uh, and, and how will they get from place to place and what's the transit access and so we're thinking about this in a larger sense is I think what really transforms neighborhoods and so uh, I'm happy to hear uh, to sit here feeling like you know I'm on third base, but <laughs> as if I hit a triple. But really, you know, I came in uh, yeah. in many respects, and a lot of this good work was being done. So my, I tip my hat yeah. to my colleagues and those who've come before me. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, but um, you, and you, oh, you also mentioned, and I wanted to hear a little more about it, the engagement that you actually uh, do with families, because you know every year you guys celebrate. There, there's always some type of celebration, and and it's kind of like celebrating with the with the residents, with the community, uh, give them back if if, if mm -hmm. so. Uh, you not only have sort of like block parties and bring everyone together and have one of the largest cook, you know, barbecues cookouts out. And it's just, it's amazing how everyone comes together. But you also have your gala events that are so significant. As I remember, so many celebrities came through the, through that corridor and, and, and significant brought something to the table. And it's the engagements and it's how you got everybody involved, your partnerships, your funders, you know, the residents. Everybody came together to celebrate because you, you celebrate all, also the That's fruit right. of this beautiful <laughs> well, you know, gathering. Well, we, you know, we want Dorchester Bay to be, you know, the hub, if you like. I mean, we want it to be the, the focal point of, of important efforts and successful efforts to bring people together, to bring business together with the community, to bring community members together with other partners in the, in the area. Uh, and we want Dorchester Bay to be that resource. So, you know, uh, social events are a lot of fun. They're mm -hmm. a lot of work to put on, but they bring people together. Uh, and uh, they've proven to be successful, not only for those who attend, they have a good time, they can meet new friends and make new friends and develop new opportunities, but for us, because we get to tell everybody, hey, you know, Dorchester Bay can help you with this if you have an interest, you know, if you want to start a business, we can help you with that. You know, if you're looking for housing, maybe we know someone who can help you with that. If you're having some difficulty in school, uh, maybe we can help you with that. So uh, if they don't know about us, we can't do our work, and so we have to do that outreach. It means a lot. Yeah, yeah. I want you to talk a little bit about your, your, your business mm -hmm. alone because I've also had the pleasure of meeting some of the folks that did come through that, that, that corridor and did start a business. And, uh, and actually, uh, I believe there's still one that sort of sticks out that actually kind of grew his business and is really huge in the business right now. But... Um, but just in general, there are folks out there that are thinking uh, how to start. Sure. Uh, you take them through the process of, you know, creating a, uh, you know, a proposal and how to go through the process of, of creating the business concept. Walk me through a little bit. Sure, of that. sure. Well, you know, uh, many businesses begin with just kind of a crazy idea that mm -hmm. someone says, "I can do that better." Uh, and you know, we have a very good economic development staff at Dorchester Bay that can take that idea uh, from something you think of when you're out walking in the morning to a business plan. Uh, and if you have a business plan, which is, you know, re, re, um, uh, is, a, is a reflection of the extent to which you've thought about the risks and the opportunities and the competition and how much money you need to make it happen, that business plan can then be used to, uh, to access capital. Now, not every business uh, can, uh, can, can start by someone saying, I have an idea and I have enough money to start it. Sometimes you need to borrow money. Uh, and many times people in lower income areas don't have a banking relationship or are not yet credit ready to borrow from a bank, but Dorchester Bay has, we have our own neighborhood loan fund, mm. and we're able not only to provide the technical assistance that a business or an entrepreneur needs to decide if he or she is ready to take the next step, 
But if we determine through uh, lots of conversations that the individual is ready, we can say, okay, we can lend you some money to make this happen. Uh, and our credit uh, ratings and, uh, and standards are more relaxed than they will be for a commercial bank. So we partner very well with banks who say uh, to potential customers, we think you've got a great idea here. We're not ready for you yet as a bank, but talk to Dorchester Bay mm -hmm. because they may be able to help you with a loan. And we can lend in-house. We don't have to go to another bank to do it. Mm -hmm. We have our own loan fund. We can lend up to $50,000 from Dorchester Bay. So we encourage people with ideas uh, to call us uh, to help get started on the path towards uh, starting a business because economic development is... Uh, it's finding a good job, sure, and staying in a good job and advancing in a good job. But, you know, uh, what we can do to help grow new businesses uh, or help an existing business grow, I mean, that can make a big, big change in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. and that's all what we're about. Yeah. And, you know, another thing I like about Dorchester Bay Perry is that you guys stayed in the community, you know? I mean, you have a very beautiful building that sits right in up in corner, the eye, or the eye of the neighborhood, you know? And you, you had many options to move somewhere else, to go other places, you know, to be near the water, near the mm -hmm. seashore. <laughs> but you stayed there. You stayed there and you helped all those businesses that are in the neighborhood, um, you know, support and grow. And all the businesses that you, uh, or all the other uh, programs that you've had have always supported and, and assisted the neighborhood, you know, business partners that you have, and, uh, and definitely families that, that are in your, your buildings because, uh, you also, you know, you do meetings with them. You're always meeting with them. Well, you know, you can't really be uh, in the neighborhood unless you're of the neighborhood, and you mm -hmm. can't be of the neighborhood unless you're in the neighborhood. So we do own this building, which is uh, an old building on the corner of, uh, of Columbia Road and Dudley and Stoughton. Uh, and uh, it's a quirky old building, <laughs> but it is historical in its way, and it really is at that critical intersection. So it's the gateway, as you say, to Upham's Corner. And because we own the building, we are constantly thinking, what can we do with this building to be of greater use to the community. What can we do with the, some of the space we have? Now, currently, we have a, a wonderful new tenant, the Fairmount Innovation Lab. Mm -hmm. And this is a business accelerator uh, for area entrepreneurs who want to start a business. And they're doing great things in there. And we're very pleased to partner with them uh, as they try to grow those businesses that we talked about, those entrepreneurs a few moments ago, uh, with support and mentorship and so forth. And hopefully these businesses will grow uh, they'll find investors and they'll, uh, their growth will be accelerated, hence the name, uh, and then they'll move out and be terrific success stories. So we're very happy to partner with an organization like Fairmount Innovation Lab and Leora Beer um, to make uh, our building uh, a function as an economic development tool as well. Yeah, and, and you know, you, you're in a historical site actually, you know, mm -hmm. there's a book out, the Dorchester, uh, there's, a, there's a book, I, I'm not quite remembering the title of it, but it has photos of what that building and sort of that block used to be significant back in the days. I believe if not, it was the largest either meat or supermarket in the state of Massachusetts or in the world, I, I just, I, or in the states. Mm -hmm. But it had a huge significance of what that block used to represent. And, um, and then yet still a, a, a commuter rail or something used to run through that neighborhood. Um, and you, when you look at the pictures of where it is today and where it was then, it's, it's you know, there's the transformation and, and all the things that you, you guys have done with it. It's, it's just really amazing. Well, the, the, that intersection, the Upham's Corner intersection that we discussed a moment ago is really, um, it's the focal point for a lot of uh, development efforts and a lot of development visioning. I know the city of Boston is quite keen to make Upham's Corner uh, achieve its full potential. Uh, you know, we've got the Strand Theater just yes. down the street. We'd love to see something great happen there. If we can play a role in that, we would mm -hmm. love that. We have the Indigo Block that we're developing. We have our building that we own, the Pierce Building, right in the center of it all. Um, you know, we're, I, I feel that there's something big about to happen, and right. we'd like to be a part of it so that what happens is really good for the neighborhood. Uh, and good for the community and, and for the residents who've been there for such a long time. Yeah. And it's funny because uh, at the same time, you also share sort of like a, a partnership and yet, uh, and just for the sake of, you know, giving a little bit of um, uh, sort of credit to also the Up and Scorner, I mean, the uh, Up and Scorner Main Streets program that also helps in, in that area. But, um, you know, a little bit further down from, from your area, um, and I was part of that as a resident, was to recognize the pear that at one time, there was a pear foundation, uh, what is it, plantation at one time. And who would ever think that Ever Ever Square at one time was a pear you know, uh, right. plantation. So, so much history, so much history in that neighborhood. And, and I think the oldest house 
in Dorchester is is, is around that block That's right, there. just around the corner. So it just it has so much history, so rich in culture there, and uh, and you guys are continuing to develop and and bringing this neighborhood into uh, where it needs to be, really. Well, new century. We, we want to do our bit. I mean, there's a tremendous amount of history upon which to build, um, uh, and we want to see the the development be the right kind of development that helps the community. Um, you know, really achieve its full potential, keeping an eye on the past, but looking towards the future. Right, that's awesome. Anything I missed? <laughs> well, I think you did a good job <laughs> of extracting guys, the information. Yeah, and, uh, you guys, are just, you're all over. You got so, good, so many good things, you know, and, and I really congratulate on Ingo, Ingo line because that's, that's going to be a beauty. That's well, going to be a beauty. Well, you know, none of this stuff happens by accident, yeah. and uh, we're very grateful to the residents. We're grateful to the city. We're grateful to uh, you know our partners uh, on the development side of things, and I'm really grateful to my colleagues at Dorchester Bay because uh, the work that's involved in getting this done uh, is uh, is never ending, uh, but it's uh, it's always satisfying, and we're really glad to be a part of it. Perry, thank you so much for coming on. No, it's my pleasure. Thank you so thank much. Thank you for anything. And that is common ground for now. We'll be back.